Hi, I'm a Tryon. And you're watching Student Shorts. Jimmy Darmody once said, you can't be half a gangster. The same can be said about a student. I mean, you can be a part-time student, but in my eyes, that's just as bad, if not worse. Hi, I'm Mitch Ryan, and this is Student Shorts, the show that promised me that we'd be done filming before December, which is why I had to cancel my trip to the Bahamas and is why we are now filming in my art studio instead. <laughs> Funny story. This morning as I was deciding what to wear whilst bathing in my diamond cut finished bathtub filled with Don Perignon, I wondered to myself, why don't I know how to drive a manual car? But then I realised, because that's what poor people do. But learning how to drive a car is important. At least that's what director Eduardo Martinez teaches us in his short comedy, The Getaway Car. Let's take a look. This next film is a stop motion animation that was whipped up in one night, and boy does it show. It comes to us from a once lonely and deprived student filmmaker, Damien Spitzia, who put his talents to good use and is now a lecturer at Edith Cowan University. This is Constanzi and the Virgin. Everyone knows when times are tough, you must be made of thicker stuff. Well, everyone knows, but Constan's grot. A whiny, grumbly, selfish snot. All her friends moved to distant lands. They couldn't bear whinging stands. One morning, while moaning about being single, Stans heard singing that made her skin tingle. So through the shrub and back with a fright, there sat the most unusual sight. The Virgin Mary, on a log, her feet quite bare, a blue sash framing her curly brown hair, with a bright yellow petal between her toes and a sprinkling of freckles around her nose. Come closer, said Mary with one hand outstretched. I'll help with your troubles, or at least do my best. Stan said, well, all the boys think I'm simple because my nose always runs and I'm plastered with pimples. The Virgin gave Stan's a pat on the head. <laughs> Who needs him anyway? Try this trick instead. Before bed tonight, lay your hands in your thighs and roll on yourself till sparks dazzle your eyes. 
That evening, Constance took Mary's advice and slept like a dream after doing it twice. She just couldn't stop, and by the next week, Constance was broke and had nothing to eat. She went to the Virgin in a prayerful pose. I'm starving, begged Stan. So, uh, I don't suppose... Oh, hell, said the Virgin. For God's sake, Constanzi, to get, you must give. Do you understand me? But maybe this once I'll do as you wish. If you promise not to moan or bitch. That night, Constanza awoke to a banquet of bottomless porridge and custard cream tartlets. She couldn't stop scoffing and by the next week she was so fat she dented concrete. So off to the virgin while wolfing a roll. I'm worthless, moaned Stans, a fat ugly mole. But mm. Mary just yawned. I'm sick of this game. I listened, I fed you, and still you complain. Then the virgin touched stands at the tip of her hood, and a storm of electricity grew where she stood. Wee sparks like fire zapped through her shoes, and then past her eyes, in the part where they're bluest, Mary felt her chest to check for a beating. There wasn't a murmur. Stans promptly was eaten. And revealing herself as a child-munching demon, Mary said softly whilst licking her fingers, These kids are so stupid, so easy to fool. I feel like a feast. Where's the next public school? So children, remember, all complaining denied, or the virgin will have you roast, raw, or fried. That was astounding. But you know, when I watched that film, I thought to myself, do females actually masturbate? Which is why I took my question straight to the source in another Student Shorts exclusive. So Damien, thank you for joining us on the show this evening. Pleasure, Mitch. How long have you known about female masturbation for? Um, well, I'm 30 now. About six or seven years. Actually, when did I make the film? 2005, yeah. Yeah, shortly before I started work on the film. Uh, do you feel like you had much experience with female masturbation or did you have to do a little bit of research on it? Um, I had to research a little bit. I got out some videos on the old VHS. Um, uh, that, it all seemed a little... I was looking for something a little bit um, more lenient, a bit more held back. So I ended up just looking in people's windows at night. Wow. The sound technique. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been a filmmaker? Uh, I don't know. How, how do we define when one becomes a filmmaker? Because uh, I still haven't really been paid like a huge amount for anything. So yeah. if you define it by income, then I'm still not a filmmaker. So. But the, the day I decided to be a filmmaker, well, like I said, I'm 30 now. So that would have been 28 years ago. The ripe old age of two. Shouldn't you be at your peak at this point? Um, yeah, thanks for rubbing it in, Mitch. Uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, well, no, I, technically, actually, I've reached my peak about three years ago, and now I'm just continuing that downward slide, which will pretty much last the rest of this decade. So perhaps maybe you're in the wrong field. Uh, like, when you were a kid, what else did you want to be? Like I said, I, I decided when I was two and a half. <laughs> um, but uh, I did entertain other other career choices, vocations. Um, but they all kind of involved eventually seeing me, I guess, go to prison or something. So filmmaking was the only way I could really get out, I think, that kind of creativity, you know, where you get to be part of a group, you get to work with a group. Um, you get to uh, bring imaginary situations to life, you know, you get to cuddle together and change it um, without the need for um, a homicidal rampage. Wow. I also hear that you're a, you're a lecturer. I do a little bit of that because we've all got to earn a crust, Mitch. Yeah. Mitchell. I just want to know, like, how do you deal with so many student films? Because let's be honest, they are she. Well, no, well, um, we all got to start somewhere. Um, uh, and uh, it is true that some students may not put as much effort into their work as some other students. Um, 
And, you know, if filmmakers... I'm being really diplomatic here. But if... Because I like getting wages. But if film is uh, a language, then maybe some people are just kind of learning that language. And, you know, it's interesting to see sometimes how they mangle it. Um, do you ever feel like your students are being too artsy? Do you ever just want to tell them, like, stop? <laughs> um, uh, I know what you mean. Um, look, it's, uh, it's like every emotional thing. We have to work through it. Yeah. And then once we work through it, because I have made some artsy, as you put it, shit in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, mainly when I was a student. Um, and, um, you know, I'm glad I kind of worked through it. And, mm. I can look back with uh, red face shame. In Constanza in the Virgin, tell us about the narrator. His voice is, you know, deep, silky, booming. Um, yeah, that was a guy called Lockie. He was a Whopper grad from that year. And he had a fantastic voice. And he's since become part of, I think, a barbershop quartet kind of group in... Um, no, 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 that's horrible. It's like an Il Devo kind of thing in, in London. Um, you know, using that fantastic voice. But, uh, yeah, I just think his voice is great. So I spent, like, a couple of days writing the words so his voice, you know, it'll do his voice justice, kind of. Um, and then I spent one night doing the animation in the edit suite as well, in Building 3. Yeah. He did it all there. Do you have any tips for students or filmmakers when they go, you know, into making an animation? Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not really an animator. So I can only just say, I can only just say from, like, a general filmmaker perspective. And that is, yeah, watch animated films. And, of course... Uh, study the great history of film animation, um, which uh, has, you know, so many different facets all around the world. Uh, you know, from, of course, what we know of, like, America and Disney to what was happening in, like, Russia, you know, when they couldn't get imports during Behind the Iron Curtain. Fascinating stuff. So, like, yeah, I say just school yourself in that and um, keep watching movies. And that's, that's the best advice I can give. Yeah. Mitch? Damien, thank you for your time and wise words. Pleasure. Pleasure. Welcome back. I'm Mitch Ryan, and this isn't the beach. Our final show tonight is another film by Central Institute of Technology's Augustine Lobay, and is titled A Guilty Witness. This film is Augustine's tribute to the film noir genre. Actually, tribute might be the wrong word. You decide. When you're a kid, they ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always knew I wanted to be a cop. I always liked to be in control. How did I get here? Everything used to be so easy. If only I had another partner. I have to go. Eddie won't be back for hours. <laughs> yes, I know. I always hate to see you go. I know. We could just run away. We have time. Yeah. I love you.
Anything? Still nothing. Of course not. I'm gonna look around and see if I can find anything. Morning, Detective. Morning. How many bodies does this make it now? Must be pretty frustrating for a detective of your reputation to be so stuck so long on a case. I'm busy. Could you go and talk to Eddie? Sorry. Where is Eddie? Is he... The first body we found was shot in the chest. A few weeks later, we found another one. Then more bodies started to appear. How am I supposed to find anything working with Eddie? Morning. Looks like a killer likes trains. Morning. Why is he always the first one on the scene? There's something here. What is it? It's nothing. It's nothing. It's always nothing with you, Eddie. I'm going. It might be nice if for once you had something useful for me. Not a shred of evidence. No sign of a struggle. Half-naked body. Shot with a small calibre at close range. What was this guy doing on an empty train at that time of night? I have to solve this. Alone. I need to get out. The walls are closing in. Good evening, Jack. Long time no see. I'm busy. Buy a girl a drink? Not tonight. Maybe we can go back to your place then. Tonight? Where's your husband? Probably passed out drunk. I miss you, Jack. I'm gonna leave Eddie. Go home, Jack. Charlotte, it's 
me. Open the door, we need to talk. So talk, quickly. Taxi's on its way. Where are you going? What do you care? Where were you last night? <sighs> What's it to you? How often do you wear this? Every day. Oh, I think you need to come with me to the station. We just need to talk, Charlotte. It's just me. I need to go. What the hell's going on, Jack? Put the gun down, Charlotte. What the hell, Jack? Put your gun down. It's not my gun. I don't own a gun. What the hell is that? I've seen this before in my life. I'm scared, Jack. It's okay. Charlotte, what's going on? Eddie, I've under control. Charlotte, give him the gun. Give him the gun, Charlotte. I did what I had to do. I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt you. I can fix it. I can fix it. That was certainly... If you've enjoyed the films you've seen on tonight's show, remember to vote for them at www.studentshortshow.com. The winning filmmakers will receive $1,000 plus one of these million dollar paintings on display. Tyler Durden once said, 
it's only after you've lost everything that you're free to do anything. Which is good news for students because it means that losing your friends, family, self-respect, dignity, confidence and money is all part of the learning curve. I'm Mitch Ryan and this has been Student Shorts. That's cool. So, that's it.